This is the third of three videos pertaining to Mastercam's general setup and toolpath creation that I've made. If you haven't watched the first two videos yet, you should probably do so now as they do proceed in order and it'll make a lot more sense. This video will illustrate how to make efficient toolpaths, rename toolpaths, and create the NC files that are needed by your CNC router to create your project. So if you remember in the last video, I showed you how just a couple of uh, simple changes can drastically change what your uh, what your toolpath will look like in simulation mode. I'm just going to go back and show you that now. And regenerate. Okay, same toolpath, but the outcome looks completely different. This is just removing, this is just, you know, cutting the on the outline of your letters. And if this is the look you're going for, you're you're done. Uh, you can pretty much fast forward ahead to around the eight minute, eight and a half minute mark where I start talking about NC file creation. However, if you like the other toolpath better that removed all the material inside, I have a couple of uh, more steps to show you. So let me just go back to that now. All right, you'll remember that this effect was being created with a very fine tip engraving point. The thick, the point thickness was the thickness of a couple of human hairs. And this would not be, I'm zooming in right now to show you that that's the tool going back and forth. You would not um, use this tool to create this effect. It would prematurely wear the bit out. Um, but there is an easy way to do that with another tool, a bigger tool bit that would remove more material quicker and more efficiently. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just uh, I'm going to get this on the screen here. I want to look at it in two dimension, like I want to look at it square on, and I want to hide. I want to turn off my toolpath here. I don't want to see the blue, the blue toolpath or the yellow lines indicating the tool moving around. So all I'm going to use is a, the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt and T, and it just turns it off. We can press Alt T again and bring it back on, but we won't. Um, what I want to do now is I want to create another toolpath. So I'm going to go up to Toolpath menu, left click, scroll down to Engraving, and left click. And Mastercam has a nice feature. If you've just created your, your toolpath for your name in the same session you're working in right now, you can use the last button here. And your letter should highlight yellow, meaning that Mastercam has remembered that that was the last thing you did when you, when you created a toolpath and it means that they're selected. If you select this button and yours don't turn yellow, all it means is you need to, you probably left Mastercam and loaded it back a day or two later, and Mastercam doesn't have any reference as to what was the last thing that you selected. So you have to do it the old way. You have to do it either with the window, you have to select your letters with the window or the polygon. Um, either way, it'll work. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, create another toolpath. I'm going to deselect the roughing on this one. You'll notice I didn't change the tool. It's still the uh, 5 thousandths tip bit. I'll show you why in a second. You'll notice now over in here in the operations manager there are two toolpaths showing and they both have the same tool in them. That's because I want the second one to be the finer, like the finishing pass of the, of the work this tool I need to change. So I'm going to click on the parameters tab here, left click, and I'm going to come in and then I'm going to go select library, I want to filter, and I want to select none first, left click on none, and then I want to move over to the end mill. You can see this has a, a flat bottom to it where the engraving bit has a point, so I'm going to select this one, it should turn blue when it's selected, and left click. And the one we're going to use is the 1 8 straight bit. Um, here it is here. Oh, I already had it in there, sorry. Um, you probably wouldn't know, so you would you would use you would go through that procedure that I did. So now you have the one eighth bit in here. I'm gonna go to engraving parameters and all the main uh, values have come over with uh, with the initial tool path. So M Mastercam has just applied them. I do have to change one value in this tab. Um, because this is a flat bit, 
I need to tell Mastercam to save room for the engraving bit, which comes in on an angle, so it still has material to remove. So I'm just going to change this value to 30 degrees. And let me sh and roughing should be on. That's good. And you'll notice that I have a X across my toolpath, which means I've changed something. What all that means is I need to regenerate it. I'm going to left click up here. And you'll notice the X has gone away, but I don't see it on my screen here. Hmm, what's happened? Well, if you've been following along, you'll remember that I turned off the the toolpath with my keyboard shortcut earlier. And to turn it back on, I'm just going to press the Alt and the T key. And what you should see is you should see a representation of this bigger tool, the 1 8 straight bit, going in and removing material. And you'll notice I don't have to zoom in very far. I don't have to zoom in a couple of thousand times to see the individual lines of the tool. So this would be a lot more efficient toolpath. And um, it would be a way more effective way to create this effect. And you'll notice I've selected, I have the uh, first toolpath selected, and it shows over here what's happening. If I left click on the second toolpath, it shows me the second toolpath. And the second toolpath is that engraving bit, which is just going around the outside of your letters. And when the two are put together, if you if you want to you know just check to make sure that it is going to look the same as we saw it before, we want both these selected right now, both these tools selected. And the easiest way to do that is to left click on the Select All Operations button. You'll notice check marks on both. And then I'm going to go back to Verify and select the machine button and if we zoom in it should look just like it did before okay so we've achieved the same effect but we've done it way more efficiently we're just about done we are now ready to um, create the NC files that are needed by the router now before we can do that though if we have more than one toolpath and right here we have two toolpaths and each toolpath is using a different bit, we need to make sure that the name of the toolpath reflects the size of bit that we're using. And here's the easiest way to change it. You want to left click on the first one, and you want to right click anywhere on the name, and you want to go up to Edit Selected Operations and move over to Change NC File Name. And here's where you can put you can keep it your name, Ingram, but I also wanted to include information about the tool. And this is a 1 8 straight bit. I can't put 1 over 8, um, but I can do the decimal equivalent. I can do 1 2 5, and I'm just going to put straight bit. I can't put the decimal in uh, in the file name. Mastercam doesn't like that, so I can't. Don't put the decimal. Just put the decimal equivalent, 1 2 5 straight bit, and select OK. And now when you come down to the toolpath icon, you can see that the name of the NC file says Ingram125 straight bit.nc. We're going to do the exact same thing to the second toolpath. I'm just going to left click on it to select it. And now right click on the name. We're going to move up to edit selected operations. Change NC file name. And I'm going to type in Ingram, and this one is the engraving bit. So this one I'm going to put 005. Again, I can't put the decimal there, but this is symbolizing what size it is, and I'm going to call it an engraving bit. And select OK. Now when you hover over the toolpath, you'll notice that the second toolpath is named Ingram 005 engraving bit, and the first one is named Ingram 125 straight bit. Two different tools, two different tool paths, and uh, the naming has been corrected. So that's pretty much it. Now we have one last thing to do. We want to create the NC files. And it's uh, just a matter of simply making sure both these are selected. You have to make sure that both these tool paths are selected. So the easiest way to do that is to select this button up here. And if they are selected, there should be check marks on both. And now we're just going to come over here and left click on the G1 button. This is how we post it or create the files. We don't have to do anything on this window. We're just going to accept the defaults. 
and a save window comes up here this you want to pay attention to where you're saving it now this would be a good time if you have a zip drive or a thumb drive to uh, plug it into your machine uh, if you don't have one you can temporarily save it to the desktop you, you'll notice we don't have to change the name of the uh, of the files that's what we just did in the step before and I'm gonna click the OK or the save button you'll notice that Mastercam does its thing it, it flipped through a couple of windows there this is now showing us um, the program code that the CNC router would interpret to actually cut out this stuff I'm just showing it to you you don't have to look at it um, not for this project anyways but this is the language that uh, the router uses I'm just gonna X or close it off here in the corner and you'll notice Mastercam is waiting for us to accept the next toolpath right this is the 005 engraving one it's also being saved on the desktop and I'm gonna check save Mastercam creates it shows us the code if there was anything we needed to check we could but we're not going to and I'm gonna close it too and that's it you have now uh, made efficient toolpaths when you need to you have renamed toolpaths uh, that reflect the tool that's actually being used in them and you have created the NC files needed to cut this part out thanks for watching